Nerd Rage Relegates. Finally hits Netflix. Chief and I are excited, and Charles Manson is dead. We are here with the Nerd Rage Renegades, and Turkey Day is coming. And what great news we've had all week long leading up to the day that Chief and I go into food comas for about a week. Yeah, I, I, I'm having at least two dinners, I think. Oh, hey, Lance. Oh, hey, Bob. You gonna cook me, Bob? <laughs> yeah, Lance. Why don't you drink the absinthe, Bob? I got I got a twenty pound lance in the in the freezer. Oh, I got something like that too, man. I went so I went to the grocery store with the kids to pick up the turkey, and the daughter was like, "I want that one. I want like the big turkey, right?" I'm like, "Oh, that looks like lance." And I look at the tag, and it's like it's like this turkey is thirty dollars. I'm like, thirty dollars for a fucking turkey? What the fuck? Well, that I'm like, I don't know. Maybe she go a little bit smaller. I mean, that's thirty dollar turkey, and I, she's like, "But dad, I really want that one." So I'm looking at the you know the little tag that has like the per weight pound shit like that. I turn it over and it said, with your Kroger card, this turkey is only $9.99. I'm like, wait a minute, you, you telling me? I use my card. I can get $20 off this big fucking turkey? I was like, Lance, you're coming home with me. We got a free one. My uh, my wife's work gave us all, gave everybody that works with her 20-pound turkeys. <laughs> Did they have to shoot it first? No. Oh, They're good. Really nice frozen turkeys. Oh yeah, all, with all the giblets. Um yeah, <laughs> I'm, I don't know. I'm I'm kind of I don't know if you, you didn't see the new Bob's Burgers, did you? Not yet. I've been I've been I've been binge watching Frank. I've been having I I finished it, ladies and gentlemen. The first Netflix show that's come out that I've actually finished before a show that we're talking about it on. So big deal for me. Yeah, I I I finished it. Uh, when was it? Yesterday afternoon, I think. Yeah. It was oh but, man. Yeah. But but it's a it's a really it's a really hardcore one. It's <laughs> hardcore. Not, there's a lot of blood. It's just blood yeah. and zip ties. Well, before we get into Frank, because that's going to be the bulk of the show, we also have Doomsday Clock. We're going to have to talk about in a little while. But are we uh, allowed to talk about that now? We or are. That, uh, yes, we oh. are. Because it will go up. That sh will hit Wednesday on shelves. So yes, we'll be able to talk about it. But first, let's talk about the news around the world. Charles Manson is dead at the age of 83. Yeah. Oh, of course, Chief thought he died like a year ago. Yeah, I I thought that he <laughs> did. Didn't he have some kind of medical something? Yeah, or he went other? in like, uh, January this year. He went in like the hospital and uh, was like really sick and shit. But now now. The the beast is dead. Oh okay. Well, I, yeah, I must have must have been when he was in the hospital. I thought he died. <laughs> now, no, uh, also, Della Reese of Touched by an Angel died. And Malcolm Young well. of ACDC. Yeah. A lot of deaths this 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 week. Um, I, now I do. I'm not defending the guy. I would never defend Charles Manson, but I I do want to point out a lot of people on Twitter, including major news outlets are labeling him a serial killer. I don't, you know, the man is a... Man a is cult a, killer, right? Eh? Well, the man's an evil... He, well, he was, we can say that now, he was an evil, evil creature. But serial killer, no. He, as far as we know, no evidence ever pointed to him actually doing any of the killings. Leslie Van Houten, Susan Atkins, I mean, yeah, they all took, you know, they took out the killings, but not really so much Manson. Manson was never confirmed to have been there. Well, maybe he was confirmed to have been there, but he was never confirmed to have actually killed any of them. So the label of serial killer, I don't think, fits. Uh, he did some dirt when he was a kid, like go to jail for a while. He he was in jail and then out of jail. You know, he wrote songs with uh, Dennis Wilson. <laughs> but I was thinking about it today. Lived you know, with him for a while, yeah. I guess. And what's really <laughs> weird is just two days before. Before he dies, he died on Sunday. Two days before he dies, Leslie Van Houten, one of the killers, one of the people who actually committed the killings, 
was granted parole, Chief. Yeah. <laughs> now she now of course that parole goes the under, legal system you know well, what are you gonna do now that parole goes does have a 120 day um you know review process so she could they could say you know what fuck it no you're not getting out yeah give her a chance to kook it up a little bit <laughs> but they say she's a model nope. she's a model inmate she got two degrees while she was in there and was teaching classes whatever but everybody was like, I wonder what his followers think. I wonder what his followers are going to do. Uh, most of his followers disavowed him. They, they didn't want nothing to do with him. Uh, Squeaky Frome is, is gone to ground. She's like, she's out of jail. She's not in jail anymore, but she's like off the radar. Uh, and Susan Good was the last one that I know of that was like hardcore still, you know, hey, Charlie, give me the D. Uh, but we haven't really heard much from her since like 2001. So as far as his followers go, do you think there was any truth to that, or they just like being in the spotlight for having been a part of that? I don't know. I mean, I wasn't there. And then Brian Cranston comes out, you know, today, and says that him and his brother or cousin uh, used to go riding horses at the ranch where the Manson family stayed, and he and and he met Charles Manson, and they wanted him to become part of the family. <laughs> <laughs> now, do I don't know the validity of Brian Cranston saying, "Hey, I was almost in the Manson family." I mean, uh, crazy shit's going on in Hollywood right now. Everybody's accused of something. So now, you know, Brian Cranston was almost a member of the notorious Manson family. <laughs> well, instead, he went and started making meth in a RV in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, and uh, as Malcolm's dad. <laughs> Malcolm's dad making meth. They lure you in. Uh, there was that episode of Breaking Cleveland Bad show. is good though. I, I won't lie, it's a good, it's a good show. I liked it a lot. There's an episode of Cleveland Show where they're watching Breaking Bad, and the guy, one guy's like, "But this show has adult situations." And Cleveland Junior's like, "They lure you in because it's Malcolm's dad." <laughs> no, I really like that. I liked uh, Breaking Bad a lot. I thought it was pretty, pretty amazing show, really. But now I have to figure out which killer cult leader who's still alive i have to start looking at next because charles manson is now dead and my uh, wish my, my wishes of actually interviewing that man just to figure out what he's about are now dashed not that i you know i'm the next geraldo rivera i'm opening up freaking uh -huh. Capone's vault again you know that whole thing so who am i uh, i think man's was interviewed in and out enough he was gonna he told what he was gonna tell by now Hey, the BTK killer's still alive, right? I could probably go after that guy. I wouldn't even want to be in a room with that guy. That guy's a creepy... He's a huge monster of a guy, too. Uh, just keep, him, keep him chained. Keep, don't give him any adrenaline after you beat the shit out of him. Because if you give him <laughs> adrenaline, he's going to beat the shit out of you and gouge your eyes out. Oh, man, were you just like, oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, let's, <laughs> all right, that. let's cut the bullshit. Let's cut the bullshit. Let's talk about Frank. Let's talk about Frank Castle, the Netflix series that Chief and I have been waiting for, because this is a story of a man. This is not a story of a superhero. This is not the story of someone with superpowers. This is a man. Uh, this is, oh, well, The Punisher, first of all, has always been one of my favorites. I've always had a... I've always had a soft spot in my heart for Frank, as you know. Oh, yeah. As I've always said, Frank Castle is the answer to all questions. He is. Uh, I've said that for years. Him and his, and, him and uh, his saw. <laughs> and, that squad, right. and that squad automatic weapon, not like a, a saw, a squad automatic weapon. <laughs> but, uh, man, I thought that they they nailed Punisher for this. Well, like, they knocked his, it out of the park. His, the, the way he operates, the way he... Uh, the, the, when he when he has micro in his ear on on a mission, that's what I was waiting for that for that moment, that first moment where he, he goes on a mission with micro along with him and and with the earpiece and telling him where to go and all that shit with the drone. And I was like, that was pretty badass. And it and and it really it didn't set anything up for the future. That I mean, really, like all well, kind of did, but I mean, I I thought it was just a good standalone Punisher story. That's that, something yeah. that. That's something that the Punisher would do. That's that, that's a scenario Frank Castle would get into, I think. So I really so so being a Marine, <laughs> there and I told Chief about this. There was only one aspect that I kind of didn't like about the show, and that was uh, some of the ways they portrayed post traumatic stress disorder. Because as someone who has PTSD, it really did seem like 
uh, especially with Lewis Wilson, the character Lewis Wilson, they went to the ultimate extreme. Uh, and basically, I read that they basically modeled that guy after Timothy McVeigh. And uh, the whole the whole series. Um, so you at the at the beginning, I wasn't really sure because it seemed like they had two stories going on. They had Frank's story, and then the story of this kid, uh, which eventually came together. But I was like, what's up with this kid? And at first I'm thinking, well, he's he's army, he's disgruntled, he wants, you know, he thinks America's failed him. I thought maybe this was going to turn into the character Nuke from the from the Daredevil and Captain America comics. That's what I thought he was going to become originally, and I thought at some point he was going to, like, uh, use cami paint and maybe paint the American flag on his face like Nuke has. Uh, not the case. And it, but I was watching it, and I was kind of like, well, I, you know, and I was, and I saw news reports flash about my my feeds of, oh, he's the he's the character that makes everything great about this show, and uh, no, he doesn't. Fuck you, whoever wrote that piece of garbage trash. But uh, I, I I was just I wasn't really enthralled with the Lewis Wilson character that he's he's that manipulated, you know, he he's that you know the stuff that happened to him, he's that manipulated, he's gonna start bombing things. And, uh. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, you know, I'd be lying if I said that every scene was necessary. <laughs> I mean, there were a couple of the bone and scenes that we didn't really need. No, those were necessary. Uh, those were absolutely necessary. I mean, for the, as far as it advanced <laughs> the story, I mean, the, the, the real story, like, yeah, that kid didn't have any other purpose but to serve some political point in the, in yeah. the show. And, uh, but, uh, aside from that, the, the side of, with Frank, the Frank side, was the, what I like about it, Frank Frank's Frank's politics are pretty simple. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's why I like Frank. Frank is a, a black and white kind of guy. He's like, this is the way it is, and this is what I'm gonna do. And then uh, he also breaks that code, I guess, when he when he starts caring about certain people. He, yeah, and I love it because you know Micro's there, and Micro is telling him, you know, we should go to. You know, what if we go to Madani? What if we do this? What do we do that? And Frank's like, no, we kill them all. We everybody dies. And Michael's like, are you sure? He's like, everybody dies. You know, just no, I'm not talking about this. Everybody fucking dies. Um, all right, Parenthal and- as as Frank Castle is just right on. And I was talking to my wife, and I said, you know, you had the goofy Dolph Lundgren Punisher, and then you had the fairly decent Thomas Jane Punisher, which I thought was actually pretty decent version of the Punisher. It was decent. Nowhere near as brutal as Bernthal. No, no, not at all. It was, at the time it was, at the time I thought, wow, this is a pretty a pretty hardcore movie. But uh, then you had that Warzone or whatever the fuck that was that was With more Ray cartoony. Stevenson, yeah, and the, the really yeah, weird looking car- jigsaw. Yeah, it was, it was like more cartoony, more comic booky version of the Punisher. And then uh, it's like you've had all those, and like Thomas Jane is the, clearly the best out of all those. And then Bernthal comes along, Daredevil season two, and he's just nailing Frank Castle in that season. And then this came out, and it's like, man, he is just the most, <laughs> and he's just a vicious Punisher. <laughs> he's not fucking around. Oh no, no. And he will beat you to death with his bare hands. He doesn't need anything. He doesn't need a big gun. He'll beat you to death with his bare hands. And like I said, he's a, he's not, you know, even Daredevil. Has an uh, an iota of superpowers with his he- with the way he can hear things and things like that, you know. Then you had Jessica Jones who has the super strength and everything, you know. Luke Cage, unbreakable skin. Danny Rand with the iron fist that she. But then you have Frank. The Frank has guns and his military training, and Frank gets the shit kicked out of him multiple times in this series. He's on death's door multiple times. He's got to get sewn up, stitched up. An arrow oh, yeah. cut out, you know, like an arrowhead, his body cut open to get an arrowhead out, you know. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's seriously almost dies more than uh, more than a few times. Oh, yeah. He, he. I mean, there is more blood in this series than I think any of the other Netflix series. And we thought we thought Daredevil was pretty brutal when uh, Wilson Fisk kept slamming that dude, that car door on the dude's head in, in season one of Daredevil. This, this, I mean, people are getting there. I mean... My okay, so I my favorite scene, I I loved when they went into the bunker to take out Frank, and Frank takes out an yeah. entire squad by himself. That is just fantastic. Well, I think it's the beginning of that episode. Is it? Is it? Uh, I think it is the beginning of that episode where 
it, I think it starts out where he's spray painting the white skull on the on the flak jacket. After and, he uh, had a, after at the beginning of the series he had burned. Uh, yeah, he had the, the one that he had from uh, shoot, Schoonover or whatever his yeah, name was. From from Mr. Krabs. <laughs> Frank, <laughs> Clancy. Frank Castle, you're gonna give me a Krabby Patty. <laughs> no, but the, I, it's like I I had the feeling as soon as I saw him putting the skull like painting the skull on, I was like, oh, it's, it's, he's, this this episode is gonna be kick ass. I could tell already. Everything about it, and, I, and I, what I loved was the the teasers that they were doing for um, Punisher, like the one in the woods where he takes out the squad in the woods was was an episode. Every teaser they showed before the series came out was in the show. Everything and the yeah. fact that it all yeah, right. and it was like part of it all like it was all, like the little snippets you heard were like clues as to stuff that was going to happen. Yeah, um, and they kind of stood out in the in the show. Um, a couple things I kind of had to take with a grain of salt, um, and I ha- kind of had to think to myself like when they show the flashbacks of Kandahar, Frank and Billy are wearing basically they're wearing army uniforms, but I'm guessing because they were part of this this elite team, everybody wore the same uniform and they went with one uniform, because I was kind of like, well, why aren't they, you know, they're Marines, why are they wearing Army-style fatigues? But uh, then I was like, well, they're part of this covert operation team, so they're all going to wear the same uniform, you know, it's not going to be a different uniform, so I kind of got It that. must be something thought out, because when he's wearing his, his Marine dress uniform, it's like all... It's accurate. As far as like, it's, it's accurate. all accurate. Yeah, yeah it's accurate. So it, must, it must be something to do with that. I'm sure they wouldn't just blatantly get it wrong. No, no, no. And I love that he, he talks about the Marine Corps a lot. I love that, uh, you know, there were several things that, that in the show that I was like, wait a minute, they're already doing this now. Like, see Thomas Howell at the beginning uh, who played uh, Wolf, the guy who, the, 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 the head guy at the uh, Homeland Security that Madani takes over for after Frank brutally murders him yeah i thought that was going to be like the big bad of the whole season like he was going to be the foil for the whole season and then funny boy bought it quick and he bought it quick and it's like holy shit the fuck oh and and, oh yeah by the way people spoiler alert um but um (laughs) you haven't watched it stop now because we're about to really ruin it so get out of here now if you haven't watched all the punisher yet all those all those other podcasts the spoiler free podcast you're not going to find it here we're talking about it no yeah we already watched it all so you're late to the game oh yeah ben's got two kids and he watched it all what's your problem oh yeah (laughs) i had to watch it at night after they go back after they go to bed you know um, so, uh, you know, first you have him and then you have Agent Orange and then, you know, and then of course, then Billy Russo and, and yes, I was waiting the entire series for Frank to either take a knife to his face or something to his face. Cause I'm like, at some point he has to, they have to give him at least a semblance of, of Jigsaw, which is who he is. Yeah. Well, the they, they've changed, they changed the character a little bit to be one of his, his Marine buddies, but yeah. in the comics, he was like a Maggie, a crime boss or something like known for his looks. And Frank fucked him up. Yeah. And that's why he hates Frank. But yeah, it's uh, uh, yeah, I, I, it it finally does happen, and in the most brutal way imaginable. <laughs> but oh, uh, when it, when he did it, I was just like, oh yes, yes. And what I, here's what the other thing I I loved about this: there was there was no shield involvement at all in this whole episode. There was none of the there was no hand. There was none of the stuff from previous series. This was Frank in New York taken out who he had to take out no superheroes showing up saying frank you can't do this no and that's what i liked about it because that in the comic books the superheroes and i don't know if it's from cap comes down i think it has come down uh, if i remember correctly in the uh it was i think it was the Warzone comic book where he fought the avengers and they finally had to they finally went to go bring frank castle and they sent the avengers and he beat all the avengers <laughs> um so uh, I, I guess I, it infers in the past before whatever he was wanted for at that time, it infers in the past that either uh, Captain America and Wolverine have kind of protected Frank Castle from being on the on the radar for a while because yeah. the uh, Captain America respects what Frank Castle does, I think. But he he goes over the line in that in that miniseries. And they send the Avengers after him, and he, he defeats all the Avengers one by one. And uh, Thor ends up having a beer with him because he defeats Thor. And then at, at the end of it, he, like, bests Thor, so Thor 
uh, breaks out a six pack and they drink and mm-hmm. Thor leaves them alone. <laughs> but uh, it, it's it's kind of cool that they're not involved because Frank Castle kind of is off of Shield's radar. He is off of the radar of the big time heroes. And even Tony Stark says in the movies that they're for they're there for cosmic invaders and gods and shit like that. Yeah. They're not for this small time arms dealer shit. That's for that's Homeland for Security and everything else. That's for Frank. Yeah, and, and Frank. And like Shield's not gonna get involved in Frank. And plus they're scared shitless of Frank Castle. <laughs> and and even in uh there's there's a part of uh some of, I can't remember what issue it is, but it's in the early part of Superior Foes of Spider-Man in the comic book. They're, the Superior Foes are all in their like little hangout kind of club where they're where they're all discussing their their plans, and they look out the window and they see Frank Castle standing outside. It turns out it's the Chameleon, like in Frank Castle disguise, just to run people off. But uh, they think it's Frank Castle and super powered villains run from Frank Castle. They they don't want any part of him. And and uh, they know he's just a bad motherfucker that will not you you have to kill him. And even that might not even stop him in a Marvel book. <laughs> and really this whole series is kind of like a Frank redemption story. It's Frank finding him in a way finding himself again cuz up until now, up until the series, uh, you know, well the end of the series Frank has had one mission and one mission alone, and that's to kill everyone that was involved with the death of his family. He didn't care who got in his way. You get in my way, you're dead. I want these people. And along the way, with Micro coming in, he starts realizing that there are... Because at that point, Frank had nobody he cared about. He didn't care about jack shit, except for Karen Page uh, going into this series, because he formed a respect for Karen Page in Season 2 of Daredevil. But then you bring in Micro, and Micro's family... Uh, and uh, damn, Micro, <laughs> good on you. You got yourself a good-looking wife there, Micro. Damn. Um, and uh, and he starts caring for people. And I love, I I loved Micro in this series. The actor yeah, who played Micro. Yeah, the two of them together were good. Oh. The, the, I love that that Frank finally had a, a partner to team up with, and uh, and I thought, man, I thought it was great, like how. It was. It reminded me of the comics. I would say that. Uh, give it. A, I mean, it's it's different, and they've they've ret you know retro whatever. Gave some Micro of the, a little bit backstory. more. Gave Micro a little bit more character development. A, a little bit more. Yeah. Um. I loved how they introduced Micro. That it was Micro. He is a hacker. He could. He 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 finds Frank. He calls the diner phone. The 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 payphone in the diner. Yeah. To talk to oh, Frank. and they had the van. They had the lair. It was a, it was it was very uh, Punisher's uh, Punisher uh, style to me. And uh, even though, I mean, it's it's hard to separate the it's hard to separate sometimes for me the the Netflix and the Marvel Cinematic Universe from the comic book origins and stuff. And it gets kind of muddled. But with this, I mean, it was it was pretty damn close. I mean, they they they're pretty damn close with Frank. <laughs> I mean, well, think about it. the only things they really changed is Frank this time was in Iraq and Afghanistan, not Vietnam. Yeah, I mean, it's it's been updated. Yeah, he's a Vietnam vet in 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 the Marvel yeah, comics. But... This time he's a he's an Iraq Afghanistan vet. You know, Jigsaw was his buddy instead of a Magia. Um, you know, they gave a little more backstory to to Micro with the family and everything. Um, and now it's going to be interesting if they, if they ever do the where Micro actually becomes uh, a villain to Frank, like he did in the comic books. But that but that's after he was resurrected. You see, uh, that's I well I thought I thought they might kill him when they, when they pulled the the little uh, what? switch up where they exchanged the, yeah. the hostages. I thought they might have killed him then, and I thought that might have been he might have been dead. Like, I wasn't expecting him to like all be a plot at, at that point because I knew at some point he's going to die. And I didn't know if they were just going to jump the gun here and do it right now, since they were ending. You know, Netflix is supposedly not making any more Marvel series after this, so well, I didn't know if they thought maybe they'd just jump the gun and kill him or what. Well, I'm pretty sure with the, with the like we talked about the Disney streaming service, Disney is going to produce more. Series I hope so, because I would really like to see this be a setup for bringing in Jigsaw. Maybe do that that Punisher in prison arc, or that that mini series in the '80s that came out. That it was like four issues, I think, but it was it was really important to Frank's 
Yeah. He went to pri- he went to prison in that, and that's when the like the warden like gave him his fucking skull suit back and his guns <laughs> and just let him out because he was just such a fucking badass. They they'd rather have him out than in. Well, you know, they teased at the end Jigsaw when they showed Billy's face all bandaged. So they teased that, you know, he can be a major player later on down the road. I mean, Frank, something's going to, they, they got to do something with Frank because he is, this, this series arguably, in my opinion, other than the second season of Daredevil when Frank came in. Uh, yeah. You know, one of the best Netflix series. They had, it was, and in my opinion, it was better than Defenders. It was so much better than Defenders. Well, I think so too, but that's I I don't know if that's just my I don't know if it was just a better show or just my bias for loving this character that much because I I waited hard for this oh, one. Yeah. Man. <laughs> well, I think for, like for me it's it's because the entire Marvel universe where we've had nothing but powered costumed superheroes. That's all we've had is people in costumes, people with superpowers. They finally give us somebody who's just a man with nothing but his skills. Doing really, Daredevil's the weakest one until you know, as far as, as far as the superpowers yeah. go. Until Frank shows up, and even I mean, then, I guess Frank, Captain and, America's kind of a regular guy too. He's just a well, he's got peak physical. Well, he, well, he's got the super soldier serum, so he's got the super strength and all that, and resiliency and things like that. But, um, you know, I, I Daredevil. I like Daredevil, but I'm realizing as I'm watching these series just how much I love Karen Page and how much that character is growing on me throughout the se- different series because she I, – I don't know what it is. I'm just liking her every single time I see her in another series because she's not afraid to get her hands dirty. She's not afraid to be in the tough situations. When when she was taken captive by Lewis, and she's communicating silently with Frank, which wire do I need to pull to make sure this bomb doesn't go off? And then she shoots. She has the gun in her purse and shoots through her purse to shoot Lewis in the foot. Yeah. It, 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 it's, Karen Page is just. I'm just liking her more and more every time I see her. You know, I'm the only thing that that I don't like. I'm I'm hoping like like you said. I hope this keeps going in a, in a, on Disney somehow because they've built kind of a world here now where these characters jump from each show into each other's series. And, and that's the, one of the only things that I wish they would do is connect it more to the cinematic. Yeah. I mean, even and, something, and, even something and let them like, guess some, let some of the big heroes come in once in a while, like Spider-Man come in just for a minute. And Spider-Man would be like the best choice because he's, you know, he is a hometown based Spider-Man technically is a street hero. You know, he, yeah. Well, how great would it be if it, the Daredevil opened up like with the sun going down and Daredevil on the edge of a building talking to somebody and look over and it's Spider-Man against the wall like, yeah. like they do in the books. Yeah, exactly. Or something even like little, like, like when Frank was running from the cops, right? In in this series, when he's running through the cops, if he ran past right. like the Sanctum Sanctorum, he, they, he yeah, doesn't have to do yeah. anything with it. Do some of the doesn't have to do anything with it. It's just right there, and you're like, that's the Sanctum Sanctorum. You know, I mean, we know Doctor Strange is in New York. Well, yeah, well, it's, it's kind of weird because they've never done anything like this. I mean, there's no, this is almost like when – because before in comics, they didn't have, like, cohesive universes, like, back in the Golden Age necessarily. They'd have some characters guest in other books and stuff, but it wasn't like – the way the DC and Marvel universes are now, they're just these huge, vast things that are almost—they've almost become real life yeah. because they're they're so vast. There's so many characters, and it's like that's what they're doing that with movies. <laughs> they're building a a connected universe. I don't know how many movies there are now. There's so many, and uh, they're all connected. It's there's a, so many, and they're all different characters and different. But they're all connected together and. That's connected to the Netflix and the Agents of Shield, and it's this huge fucking. They're creating like a, the, almost like the comic book universe in visual form on on television, which is and movies, and it's never been done before. So it's like you have to get actors to sign on for like ever right. to be part of this. 
Let, all right, let's run it. So if we count the the Ed Norton Incredible Hulk, we got the Incredible Hulk, Iron Man. I think one. you got to count it because the characters in it, they yeah. they, they mention shit that's gonna happen. Yeah. Um, Iron Man one, two, and three. Thor one, two, and three. Captain America one, two, and three. So that's ten right there. Then you add in two Avengers movies, right? So three. Well, two so far. Avengers and Avengers: Age of Ultron. Right. Because remember, we we usually count Civil War as more of a Avengers movie than Captain America. <laughs> um, oh yeah, yeah, you're right there. <laughs> so that's so that's twelve. Guardians one and two. So that's fourteen. Uh, we know Black Panther's coming out, so that's fifteen. Doctor Strange is still Doctor in there. Doctor Strange, that's sixteen. Spider Man Homecoming is seventeen. Am I missing any? Am I missing any? I think as of right now that there's seventeen films. No, oh, and then and yeah, and then there's the third Avengers is coming out, so that'll be eighteen and nineteen, I think. So there's there's two of them, I think. I think no, I think they said they're only gonna do one part now, so I think that so that's that. And we know Captain Marvel's coming, so that's that's nineteen. Black Panther's gonna get a sequel too, so that's gonna be at least twenty. So we'll count that as twenty. Black Panther looks fantastic, by the way. Fan- Black Panther looks um, it looks really amazing, and I love that it's it, the villains are um, Killmonger and uh, and and Claw. I I do like that. I think that's amazing. Like, like Man Apes in it too. Yeah, Man Apes in there somewhere too. That's that's amazing. Um, but back to Frank in this series, brutal, bloody. Oh, bloody! It's there's a lot of blood. That's a, that's one thing we could say if you've got like small kids and uh, they read the comics or whatever. Uh, this is far more violent than your like current Punisher arc in the Marvel comics. <laughs> oh, much <laughs> far better. more far more brutal. I think at least I think, and th- there's a lot of blood, and it's really violent. Um, and I, what and I think what I loved about it also is that it was realistic. You know, the the the, the injuries, the bruises, the blood. Like when 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 um, Rollins is beating the living shit out of of, of Castle. And and Russo Jigsaw is wiping off the blood off his face, and the blood just yeah. keeps pouring out of his mouth because he's been beaten so much. And I mean that to me that's real. And 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 and, and rule of thumb once again, if you're beating the living shit out of someone, don't inject them full of adrenaline because they will beat the living shit out of you. <laughs> well, we gotta get that's that's uh, close to the end. Oh yeah. There's the. Uh... Was the the fifth episode? He, is when he is that when he takes out the dudes in the forest? I believe so. When he went to go find his uh, uh an yeah, old unit buddy of his, Gunner, 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 whatever his name was. Yeah, he they went he went out to the woods when he got shot with the arrow. But yeah. that one was fucking brutal. That was that was a pretty awesome uh, scene with him taking out all the all the um, the mercs that came to get him. Oh yeah. And uh, and then like uh, the 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 one we were talking about earlier. I think it's I think it's episode ten. Where it opens up with them spray painting the skull, and that's when the guys try to invade their their lair, and he's just got it all rigged up with all kind of shit. And I was like, man, you don't chase the Punisher into his own oh, no. place. <laughs> well, even like at the beginning, the very first episode where he's under the name Pete Castleone, and yes, Pete Castleone, he has Castle still in his last name. Um, he's you know he's trying he 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 everybody thinks he's dead. He's assumed this new life. And they, I think it's, I think there's people that thought he was alive. Well, there were people that knew he was alive, but there were people that that thought he was alive, but they thought he was better just left alone since yeah. he wasn't fucking shit up everywhere. But those people, the people he was working with at the construction site, you know, they're they're criminals. They're doing something wrong. They're constantly fucking with him. And you you can see he's trying. He's holding back. But when he's finally able to let loose, yeah. and he slams and breaks that dude's leg with the sledgehammer. Oh, oh yeah. I was just like, oh, you done fucked up. He oh. kills those fucking guys. That's the craziest thing. And then covers up. Just the saves the one guy. And mo- throws him in a throws him in a in a block being filled with concrete. Yeah. Oh man, it, it, he is the he is the best. And uh, I don't know. I, I I just love Frank because it's like he does not fuck around at all. He's the one hero like you know. You're just. Uh, you don't want that skull coming at you at all because oh. you know it, it, it's just death. Um, one of the th- one of my favorite parts of uh, one of my only uh, what in uh, what was it the uh, I always forget the the arc with the the Watcher's eye for uh, some original reason. sin. Yeah, original sin. 
in in, in original sin, I think it's in the first issue when the uh, I think Nick Fury or something they they pair up and they send everybody out in teams at at the beginning of that and and uh, they pair Doctor Strange with Frank Castle and uh, Doctor Strange just kind of uh, vaporizes in to the to the room into the scene and Frank's got a guy like chained upside down like in a warehouse and he's telling him he's like I just shot you full of this kind of uh, some kind of uh, drug that he shot into his vein. He said it's gonna, it's gonna slowly start killing you, and then it, it, it's really gonna, really gonna hurt, really bad, and you're gonna suffer like for hours in agony with this this thing I gave you. Or you could tell me what I want to know, and I'll put a bullet in your head right now. <laughs> He's like, either way, you're gonna die. And like, Doctor Strange shows up behind him. And was like, Mister Castle, what are you doing? I love the fact that. I want to give kudos to this show on something. I, I want to give kudos to the show. In every other Netflix series, all right, when Luke oh. Cage, whoa, I'm looking at Chief Ceiling. Um, <laughs> when when Luke Cage gets injured and he needs somebody to, to to take care of him, or when Daredevil is beaten to shit and he needs somebody to take care of him, who do they always go to? Oh, they always go to uh, night night nurse. Night nurse. I want to give props to the Punisher series that they when they when Frank is fucked up they when Frank took the arrow Micro went and got his his war buddy who was a Navy corpsman to get him stitched up he didn't get night nurse they went and got the Navy corpsman I, that separated this from everything else in my eyes because Rosario Dawson was that link between all those other Netflix series she was in all of them yeah well you know, they, they they linked it with Karen Page obviously but I mean uh. Like I said, Frank is separate almost. Yeah. Even in the comics, Frank is separate. Like his his arcs rarely include supervillains or superheroes. But with and, uh, I, I, they I, will once in a while, yeah. but it's rare. And normally he's fighting like gun runners or somebody Drug that's dealers. gonna like, like terrorists or whatever. But I, I like I said, I want to give him props because I like I said, being a marine, excuse me, and being around corpsmen, and I know how badass corpsmen are. People will be like, oh, well, they're just naval, Navy doctors. No, corpsmen are fucking badass. I mean, they're field medics. You get your arm blown off, they got to be thinking on, like, their feet to get to you, to, 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 to get you taken care of so you don't die from blood loss or shock or anything like that. So I thought that was really freaking amazing that they went with the corpsmen on that. I love that, you know, they would uh, – the, the little things they would go back to about the military – yeah, I have a I had a little bit of problem with the with the PTSD thing. I I had a problem with the stolen valor guy, you know, who who was uh you know, yeah, he showed up to uh, Vietnam on the last, you know, on like the last day. <laughs> Mo, Mo Grimes. He's like Mo Grimes. Oh, we got to do a GTA or GTA is back. Oh yeah, we're, we we'll talk. we'll talk about that here in just a minute. Um, but I I really enjoyed that. Everything, the story arc, you know, uh, and and you could and what I also liked was the bond that Micro and Frank built, even to the point when, you know, and, and rightfully so, and, and I like the way they handled it, you know, Micro, his family thinks he's been dead for a year, his wife has been grieving for a year, Frank constantly shows up, because he's, he's checking on him, he's making, at first it was he wanted to scout out Micro, but le then it was because he really wanted to make sure the family was okay, and when she kisses him, Frank was like, whoa, you know, we can't do this, and even though Micro got piss ass drunk from seeing it, they still were able. They they, it, it's like I always tell, it's like I tell my wife when she has arguments with her friends and it lasts like days. Micro throws one punch to Frank. Frank pump, throws a punch at Micro, knocks him out, and then goes and takes care of him. The next day they're like, ah, okay, everything's good to go. You know, they don't drag out the freaking argument. You know, it's like you and I when we have arguments and then it's like, hey man, let's go do a show or something. We don't. They don't drag it out, and that's because the you know they got they form that close bond, and I really. really I think like that, that was in, that that's important to to those two characters to have done that. They work very closely in the books together. Yeah. For a while, and uh, it, I was hoping it would be like that. I was hoping it wouldn't be this just animosity all the time where they pulling guns on each other. <laughs> and they Frank, uh, for for hours and hours. And they and beats the shit out of him. They slimmed Micro down. You notice that they slimmed him down. He yeah, he was yeah, he's a big guy in the books. He's uh, which which I did like. The one thing I did like about Warzone was the casting of Wayne Knight as Micro, 
because he does kind of look like Micro. I thought that was pretty good, but I love this Micro. Yeah. I thought he was really good. I love that he basically he even says he's like I've been living in my I've been wearing my bathrobe and living in a basement for a year. <laughs> I thought that that yeah like I thought that was a one of the most important things to get right for this. If they you know they're gonna do this Frank and not a different era Frank. You need Micro. Uh, you got yeah. You got to do this if you're gonna do it. They got to be buddies. They got to be. They got to work together closely. They they live in a little space. <laughs> oh, you got to do it right. I love the part where they're driving to to Gunners, and Micro opens up the MRE and he mixes the tuna packet in the MRE for Frank, and then Micro pulls out this gigantic sub sandwich, and Frank's like, "The fuck you get that?" He's like, "I made it." He's like, "Did you make me one?" No. That had me <laughs> dying. I was like, that is fucking hilarious. That Frank's sitting there eating a military style meal, and Michael just pulled up this big old, like, it looked like a cheesesteak. Just a big old, like, cheesesteak sandwich. Well, it, it puts some humor in it for sure. Cause it's funny that, uh, that Frank Castle is this, like, uh, from the scope of the comic to the Marvel Universe, Frank Castle's a scary motherfucker. And yeah. for this guy to just be so annoying, <laughs> he's just so annoying to Frank. All the time, his little shit that he does. Like at the end, when it, it's just dying, funny that... when he's dying, he's like, "Frank, I betrayed you. Call me an asshole. Call me a shithead. Come on, Frank. Call me an asshole." Yeah. Dude, that uh, that's great it, because it's like he is, he he is a terrifying dude. And, and uh, I one story that by Vince that I that I do like is I, I believe he did the uh, the Daredevil. Um, uh, what was it called? It was the the Daredevil story that was uh, like after Daredevil's death. Uh huh. Oh, end end of days. And uh, that one was good because in that one, Ben Urich goes to talk to the Punisher in prison, and he's they've got him. It's like a Hannibal Lecter scenario. They're like talking. You don't you don't know who he's going to see as he's walking into this prison, and and the like the warden is like, look, you don't you don't touch the glass, you don't go near the glass. You don't make direct eye contact contact with him. You don't pass him anything. Um, you ask your questions, and you've got this amount of time, and you got to get the fuck out of there. And, and like basically tell them, you know, don't fuck with this guy at all. And uh, they go in, and they they open this thing, and behind this big glass wall is just Frank, and he's strapped to a chair. Like every part of his body is strapped down to a chair, and like even his neck and his head are like in this vice thing. And he's like, he's sitting there and like, the, he asks him his questions. And even though he's in this, by the end of that series, there's a, like a news report that says, Frank Castle, the Punisher is on, is on the mm-hmm. loose again, he's escaped. And it's like, oh man. It's a, and he's, he's just such a fucking awesome character. He could interact with those super powered characters, but like he, like he is a separate thing too. He has his own war, his own mission that doesn't cross paths with those guys. And he doesn't like crossing paths with those guys. Now you, it just happens sometimes. You got your comic. I'm still. I gotta go get my comics later on this week. But you got your comics last week. Did you pick up the new Punisher? Yes, the two eight two eighteen. I think it is. Yeah, I've got it. It's it's in my bedroom. I'm gonna read it tonight. Uh, I was about to say how you know how is it? I've been going back. I finally I'm I'm catching up on old books. Uh, you know, trying to ca- uh, read some stuff, catch up on some stuff, and then I gotta go get like maybe two or three weeks of books after Thanksgiving. But uh, on a scale of one to ten, Chief. What do you give the Netflix Marvel Punisher series on a scale of one to ten? One being sucky as hell, uh, ten being awesome. I'd say seven and a half. Easy. E- that's that's a conservative seven and a half. If I watched it again, I might, I'm thinking about watching it again because I did like it. Yeah. So uh, I might give it a higher rating after a second viewing, but I'd say it's a solid seven point five. I'm going to actually give it uh, about an 8 to an 8.5. Like I said, I love the story. I love how the characters were create were, were done. Yeah, I, I ha- Like I said, I had problem with the Lewis Wilson character. I had a lot of issues with that guy. But that, I did too, but not for the same reasons as you did. I just thought it was an, an, an unnecessary yeah. part of the story that didn't really go anywhere. But I, but I think mine is a little bit higher because, I, you know, being a Marine, serving, knowing the, the trials of coming home, what your buddies mean to you when you come, you know, that you, you know, they become your family. You have your family here at home, but those buddies become your family and it's hard to kind of, um, disassociate once you come home. But, uh, everybody definitely needs to check out the Punisher. 
probably, in my opinion, like I said, probably the best one since Daredevil season two. Uh, I would. Agree. I'd still say it's the best one I've watched of all of them. Yeah. Um, so hopefully Marvel once we know that the Netflix series stuff the 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 terms are coming to an end soon, um, but hopefully Disney will pick it up and they will run with it on their new streaming service that'll be out in 2019. I really like the Luke Cage series. I thought Luke Cage was good. Uh, I liked him better in Luke Cage than in Jessica Jones. Yeah, I didn't like him in Jessica. It was more action. I thought it was more. Well, you got to see more of them for one thing and he he did more cool stuff truthfully honest to me if i had to rate the series jessica jones is one of the lower tier ones of my list i liked it pretty good i mean it, it had the purple man in it. I thought that yeah. was pretty cool. <laughs> but uh the uh what an obscure fucking guy that guy is but you still uh smell bendis on it though <laughs> well yeah I, I just you know i i guess because i mean she her, her and Luke Cage. I mean, they're they're important. I I, I think that was a series that they needed to make. I mean, if they're yeah. gonna do, they're gonna do Power Man and Iron Fist. They gotta have her yeah. involved. And I mean, later on in the comic books, Jessica Jones really does break out of her shell. I mean, she becomes a mom and everything like that. She really does become more warm. Let me say than than how cold she's portrayed in the shows. To the point that you know, if anybody tries to fuck with her family, tries to fuck with her daughter, she goes into a fucking rampage and beats the living shit out of them. Yeah, I um. Didn't they? Didn't her their kid start exhibiting powers like not too long ago? Something like that. For the longest time, everybody's favorite squirrel girl was their babysitter. She was the only yeah, one I, that they would trust with their daughter. Isn't it like She Hulk, the Godmother, or something? Yeah, because they're such good. I, I think that was one of the, like I said, one of the things I thought with Jessica Jones was, um, I, I still, that would have been a cool time to put She Hulk in something during that series, maybe. I I would say She Hulk would do fantastic if they introduced her in, in Daredevil as a rival lawyer against Nelson and oh, yeah, That would make perfect sense to um, do that. I still have hope that Trish Walker will one day become Hellcat. Or at least oh, and you the... got Misty Knight, too. I mean, we got Misty Knight in there who just lost her arm in oh, yeah. Defender, so she's got the, and she got the bionic arm. Well, we know Luke Cage Season 2 is in production because we've seen pictures of Misty with the bionic arm. Yeah. So we know that should be coming. Um, I still would love in season two of Jessica Jones, and I think Chief will agree with me. He would love this. Let me lay this out for you. Give Trish a boyfriend, Trish Walker a boyfriend in Jessica Jones season two, and his name is Buzz Baxter. Oh yeah, I thought in that ser- I thought that the the one guy, the security goofball that she was seeing all the time, I thought he was gonna be Buzz Baxter in that first mm-hmm. when when they first started. I thought they're gonna. Maybe they'll they'll you know that's some kind of you know he'll that's like an alias he has or something I don't know I thought maybe he would they would they would make that guy Mad Dog for some reason but he ended up dying I think so yeah so definitely go check out Punisher it's it's fantastic it's worth every freaking bloody gun soaked minute yeah um, I got I tore through it man I watched it in just a couple of days I couldn't I. Like I said, I, I I have not like I still have to finish Stranger Things too I I these series it's just like it's with everything I got going on with, with editing and with other things, it's just like, oh, man, I don't have time to sit down and, like, I, I, After I watched the last two episodes of that, I just can't bring myself to watch the first. <laughs> I can't believe I did that. I was so pissed off. But you know what we can bring ourselves to watch again, Chief? Grand the time Theft ma- Auto. Oh, I thought you were gonna say the time machine. I bought it at yard sale. Oh no, no, that's coming though. I I did the I did the cover art for today. No, GTA is back. Djibouti is back on GTA, so that means yeah. it's official. The return of the GTA br- weekly breakdown here on the Nerd Rage Renegades podcast. Uh, wow, they came back in a big fucking way last week with with some of the their their top tier characters, in my opinion. I thought it was a good week. Yeah, I would have liked a little bit of Chang, but you know, uh, we got Mo Grimes. I still have now. I have not watched the Mo Grimes one. I got to watch the Mo Grimes one. Yeah, I've watched a little bit of Mo, and it's funny as hell. I mean, he's such an asshole. It is is it's Joe Mullet, uh, basically reincarnated as this old like. It, it's, he looks like an old carny. It's Joe <laughs> Mullet fully realized. Yeah, it's like the like the real version of Joe Mullet. Yeah. But uh, so so last Wednesday they came back with Joe Mullet. No, last Tuesday they came back with Joe Mullet, 
but w- to me, AKA Mo Grimes. AKA, AKA Mo Grimes, my bad. But it really, it really began on Wednesday. Oh yeah, that was an, that I couldn't believe that 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 happened. So the back. I got the message like you told me before I even got my. I got a tw- I got a Twitch account and I yeah. I get a message when they're gonna do it. But I saw the messenger. You you told me they were doing this before I even saw it. I was like, no way. <laughs> so <laughs> like it's about time. So what they were doing, and they mentioned it. So they were looking at bringing Jay Bergerman to the uh, to the to the family RP, uh, and they were trying to test out like the tow stuff. You know how to how towing would work on that server and everything. And then they get a message. Literally, I mean, Djibouti says basically like a minute before they're supposed to go live. They get a message from B Fly, whose character is Tora Hart on the server, and asks them to be a part of her and of your Andrew's wedding. And Djibouti even mentions he's like he was like a little cringy, he was like wedding RP that might be cringy. But yeah. then they said that they want Jerry to officiate the wedding. They want him to perform the wedding, and Djibouti was like, wait a minute, I get to perform the wedding? Oh, it's on. It is on. Oh, the whole thing is full of gold, too, because the part where he, uh, they ask him to take the, the grandpa on the wedding party to the oh, to the place. Yes. They, they ask people, right? And he's, he's drunk, and he's swerving that big purple RV all over the road, and he's singing wheels on the bus, but he's singing the beans on the bus. Go round and round. The soul wagon made its return. Yeah, the soul. Oh. He's driving the soul wagon around a lot. And then they get there, and Andrew shows up, and they want that one girl to sing, and and they then they ask Jerry to sing, and he pulls out some classic rando. He pulls yeah. out. He pulls out <laughs> the 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 theme song to the show Arthur. <laughs> he's you know? pretty good too. So they were like, "Damn, Jerry." <laughs> Andrew's even paid him fifteen, you know, fifteen hundred bucks. To get yeah, they got his money every day when you're walking down the street. Everybody that you meet has a particular point of view. Oh man, that was so <laughs> fucking good. And then Bayo, his him he cucked Bayo and he roasted Bayo the whole fucking time. Oh, oh my god, yeah. Bayo! When he gave him the money, Andrews gave him the money, and he he said, "I I'm gonna go gambling." Okay. <laughs> He's so like, let, "No, Jerry, go go do something better for yourself." So let's break it down. So so they so Jerry gets on the server. He's driving around in the soul wagon. He finds Andrews and Tor at the police station, and everybody's like, "Oh, we're getting ready for the wedding." And Jerry's like, "What you go about wet?" He's like, mm, "Wedding? What what you going about wedding?" And he's like, "Oh yeah." Uh, Tor's like, "I'm getting married." He's like, "Who are you getting married to?" And he's like, "Andrews." He's like, "You want to marry that big head?" Look at his big old head. He can't, and Andrews doesn't wear has his cop hat. He doesn't have his police hat on. He's like, look at that. Would, you, would your head get so big you can't wear your hat anymore? <laughs> beans, beans, beans. So they they let. Oh, he him, tries to make beans for everybody. The whole thing. They're like, well, Jerry, are, uh, can you? We would like you to perform the wedding. He's like, I'm an ordained minister. Didn't you know that before I played saxophone? I was. My father was in the church, and my mother was in the church, and his father was in the church. <laughs> so the, uh, Jerry's got to get dressed up for this wedding. So what does he wear, Chief? He, he they went and they put on his his best football jersey. <laughs> his best football jersey. This one ain't got no. Be- oh, this one ain't got no. And his nice pants, the, the pants that didn't have the stains on them. He wore his nice stains. pants. <laughs> and then oh, when they when he when they finally started officiating the wedding, and you have you have you have Granny Fanny's there, and of course they weren't sure if Granny Fanny was going to be there because she was caught selling drugs beforehand and was on the run from the cops and Tora made him not arrest her during the, we- the wedding. <laughs> and Jerry, of course, Jerry, he, he was doing it for the wins, Chief, for the wins. Oh, yeah, that was great. Man, I couldn't believe how well he actually did that. It was it sounded like a real ceremony. They but pulled up a script. The motherfuckers they, thrown in it once in a Yeah, while. they actually pulled up a script, and he was reading off the script. Uh, but then, of course, like you said, adding in like motherfuckers and big ass head Andrews over there, you know. <laughs> and I love it when he's like, he's like, we're doing it for the winds, and uh, you know, the winds are blessing this day, and and I love it when he's like, all right, repeat after me, I Tora, take Jerry, and she's like, don't you mean take take Tony? Oh, I was just checking, just, just make sure she's faithful now, just checking. <laughs> oh man, Jerry's the best. And, he, he's. I, he's still my favorite of all the characters, I think, because they, like they said on there, they said Jerry's Jerry's got a weird charm to him. That, he does. 
Like, he's weird, and he's gross, and he does gross shit. <laughs> Which got him in trouble after, cool after the wedding. After the wedding, that got him in trouble, because he, he rubbed this girl's back and was, like, kissing on her neck, and she called the cops on him. And, of course, the cops yeah, didn't know. do anything to Jerry, but then these two guys wanted to, like, shoot Jerry. Uh, yeah. if, it wasn't, if it wasn't for Bruce, I mean, Bruce was with him. If it wasn't for Bruce, you know, Jerry might have got shot that night. Yeah, but Bruce, took uh, Bruce up to the spot. Took Bruce and his girl up to the spot. And and that's the yeah, thing. Yeah. There, there's so many new people on the art on the family RP. I have no idea who any of these uh, these new people are. Like the uh, like the the big dude that with just wearing the prison pants. You know, and he yeah. talks, he talks <laughs> like this. Too, you know, he talks like you can't be doing that, man. You know, you can't be yeah. doing that. I'm like, Jerry schooled that guy so many times. Oh yeah. But I'm like, is that you need a shirt? Be, <laughs> but I'm like, is that maybe like a, is that maybe like Daquan, like another of Daquan's characters? I I don't know. I yeah, I don't know. It, it's been man, it's been weeks since they really got into it. The last well, they did a couple of Margarets and then they they didn't do it for a long time. Yeah, they took a break, but, which most people took a break around TwitchCon. But man, it, it came back better than ever. And then uh, I haven't seen the Jay Burger. Oh, dude. Oh, so Jay Burger. I saw him to the point where he got the toe and went to go out in the street, and then I turned. I was late, so I turned it off. So Jay Burgerman, I'm not going to ruin a lot of spoilers for you, but Jay Burgerman, he he's new to the city, chief. He, he's oh wait, but there was one more funny thing about Jerry we forgot about when is he got, when he was drunk he got, after the drunk. wedding and he tried to marry people on the sidewalk. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nope, too late. This is happening. This is happening. Oh Jerry. Um, and we did find. I found out today. I talked to him today because he streamed today. Uh, Jimmy, Officer Jay Taylor, is now on the Family RP server. He said he's been there since October. <laughs> Um, um, he said that his schedule has changed, so he's been doing a lot more like morning streams. He hasn't been able to stream at night a lot, so usually he's like the only cop on during the day. But a lot, like I even asked him, I said, "So you're on Family RP? Does that mean we could possibly see a Jimmy Jerry reunion?" He goes, "I don't know, man." He's like, "You know, I don't know if I want to bring Jimmy over here." And everybody, after I said that, just started coming up on his on his chat, going, "No, you need to bring Jimmy back, Jerry." He's like, "Well, I don't know. Jimmy needs a sidekick." We're like, "Jerry, you need Jerry." You know, you know, we're like, Jimmy was, you know, you got to do a reunion with Jerry. There has to be a Jimmy-Jerry reunion on this server. I still think you, you push out, because they, they haven't confirmed the one guy is definitely the uh, the West. Yeah, the West he, he's just they the haven't, chosen one right now. He's a tentatively, yeah, he's just chosen. Jimmy could come in and be the actual, like, Christ, Messiah, Westward Hobo. That, that or like, Jerry yeah. could be, like, the South's, like, little bitch wind. He's, like, the bitch wind of the South. Jerry's the yeah, sexy yeah. cyclone. Now, Jimmy's just a little bitch wind. You know, he dumb as hell. Just Jerry's alley with him. But then I was like, I, and I even put it in this chat. I was like, dude, Jimmy interacting with Bayo. Could you imagine Jimmy and Bayo? <laughs> Jimmy would <laughs> drive Bayo crazy. mad. Uh, so Jay Burgerman comes on, and he he's a new home man in town, chief, and he's Jay. He's a nice, lovable guy. He goes around. He's inter he he introduced. I had himself. thought that they had done Jay on there once before. No, they were talking I, about doing Jay, but there was that other guy who has a, a the model that's very similar to Jay. Oh yeah. Um, but they were talking. They said they they've been talking to him to maybe do like a long lost brother type of thing, like Jay's like his long lost brother or something, twin brother. But uh, Jay, he, he introduces himself to all the police officers. You know, he's very nice to everybody. Everybody likes Jay except for Mav because Mav owns a tow company in the city. And Jay kept getting all the toes. So Mav is, like, putting the hits out on, on freaking Jay and his the tires are getting shot out of Big Red. And, oh, jeez. Oh, God. Oh. And every time they, they go to lift him up after, he gets shot, after Jay gets shot, he farts. He's like, I'm sorry. I would... I had Shelly earlier. Oh, <laughs> oh and he sang it, Chief. He sang it. All oh, beef patty, special sauce, lettuce, cheese, all on a sesame seed. Uh, my bun. favorite is it was, they, were, they did almost, uh, when they were doing, uh, they, they took a, you know, once in a while they get up to use the bathroom or whatever, and they just let the the character go, or they, or they pause to read the, uh, the chat or something. The uh, donation, yeah, yeah, they read the chat. There was one time with Jay where there was they had the three Asian ladies who were on the lawn. Oh, that's right. The old ladies, and he went over and danced in the middle of it, singing "I'll Tow It For You" <laughs> to uh, "I'll Tumble For You" by Culture Club. Oh, but he was just it, patty, special sauce, lettuce, cheese. It looked like he was like doing like a like a Chippendales dance for these old ladies. 
<laughs> now, <laughs> I'll admit, with, with Jay, there was a lot of driving around, because, I mean, he's a tow man. He drove around Vespucci Square, like, quite a bit of times. But he, Jay endeared himself to almost everybody on the server, except for Matt I like the character, but that's my only complaint, is that he just drives around and doesn't yeah. do anything. One of my favorite ones is, is when he was with Jimmy and, uh, and uh, Kevin up on the... The oh hill and, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they were, you were trying to tase Jay. They were trying to do something to him. I asked Jimmy how Danny Purry was doing. He said he wasn't sure. I, you know, I thought they were. They they talked a lot. Uh, hopefully, uh, Danny Purry will be doing some more streaming because I always I like Danny. She was the other one that uh, Margaret had gotten a hold of when Margaret uh, got Jimmy and the girl and they made them do like the crimes and stuff for. Her. Uh, yeah, I wonder if that gets like overwhelming when you you have a small channel and it just suddenly just gets bombarded with all the streamer fans that come like Djibouti fans and Classy Packs fans. Oh, I went on Jimmy's when I when Jimmy started streaming, I jumped right in and dropped that sugar. He's like, Hey Nerd Rage, where you been? How you been, buddy? Dropping that sugar, huh? I'm like I'm always dropping sugar, Jimmy. He's like, Man, it's been good it's good to see you. I I've I've gotten in good with Jimmy, you know, talking with Jimmy on chat. I've been getting in good with Jimmy. Uh, and if you listen to the Mo if you go and watch the Mo Grimes video, there's a point where they do uh notif they do uh uh, give the notification, Nerd Rage Renegades resub, and and they were like, and uh, even Djibouti's like, Nerd Rage Renegades. I was like, yeah, he's like <laughs> sang song us. She should go steal that clip off YouTube. <laughs> I'm going to, man. I'm going to. You know, I'm gonna rip that shit. Um, so we're glad that that's back. We, you know, we'll have more. You know, as long as that's back, we've been missing it. Our TVs have been yeah, empty definitely. Us. That's I, I, seriously for a, a couple. It felt like there was nothing on ever, like it's for a few weeks, and yeah. I was like, man, I just wish they would get back. It's one of the do, and, and like even if they did Margaret, I would have watched it just to fucking see some GTA, GTA RP. Well, it's uh, it's like I, I, you know I started subbing to them uh, during the Halloween thing, and then they they didn't play GTA for like no no I, I subbed to them in September in September during the uh, the twelve hour stream. And then, like, all October, they didn't do any freaking GTA. And I'm just like, I, I kind of <laughs> subbed to you because I wanted to watch the GTA, you know. And I've subbed for three months now. I'm looking for that Tier 2, Chief. I'm hoping to get that Tier 2 sub, you know. <laughs> but, um, and, and you know, it's five bucks a month. And, my wife, I'm t and I tell my wife, I'm like, look, if I keep subbing, I get more shit if I sub. You know, I get more emotes. It helps them get to know me better, you know. So yeah, when I yeah. get on Twitch, you know, it'll be cool. You you did the well, three and, month fifteen. Yeah, I did the uh, I did the like three months, and then, then it got me again, and I didn't realize. But that's cool because I want I you know I want I want to pay for it anyway. But well, now uh, yeah, I, I GTA, yeah. Well well yeah, but I mean, I like the podcast too. Though they, they don't do GTA on that. I'll, like, on Saturdays they do the podcast, and I listen to that sometimes during the day because it's um you Saturday uh, my wife has to work usually, so I'm home during the day all day. Yeah. By myself, and so I just put I'll put it on TV like on my sound system in the living room and listen to it because it's they don't have, there's no video they just they broadcast just audio on that. Yeah. Uh. So with so we'll be ringing that again as long as they do it. Uh. What Chief mentioned earlier, the time machine I found at the yard sale. I did the uh, I did the uh, tonight as we record this on a Monday night. I did the uh, the 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 banner for it, Chief. So once we get off of here, I just uh, pop in a couple things, and I start rendering that and pop it up to YouTube for tomorrow, for Tuesday, um, which uh, was yesterday if you're listening to this on Wednesday. Uh, but that'll be the co the newest commentary track, the time machine I found at the art sale, the the one that oh, literally uh, made Chief and I fall into madness. I think it's the shortest one we did, and it feels like the longest one we did. Definitely. Uh, we did not record one this past weekend. We took kind of a week off. Of course, Punisher came out. We were kind of busy. Uh, but we're bring we're we're coming back we're bringing back with uh, bullet to the head will be the next one that we do the the Stallone new classic. Yeah, so, well, the, you the listener won't uh, won't miss any. There'll still no. be one there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we just decided not to do. It. Yeah. We we had one backlogged kind of. We've done three, two. Yeah. Um, and then I want to thank everyone who's been doing the polls for us on Twitter over the last couple of weeks. Uh, as you know, we we want to in 2018 we want to build the YouTube channel more with different videos you know hopefully john kroll will have a new show so chief will be able to do some more kroll reviews. oh he's, he's, he does have some i i can't talk about it yeah i i got, right. I got a phone call i got the phone call from him and he told me about some stuff he's got in the works so that'll be coming up i'm assuming uh his stuff runs more like in the summer yeah so uh probably be something this summer coming so that'll be good i'm always, i always love your reviews on jo all of john kroll's shows 
Well, apparently now the uh, the Twitterverse is going to have me watching anime now. So. The Twitterverse. So I had put up three things, and I want to thank everyone who gave me a whopping zero votes for me doing game reviews. Thank you, everyone. Zero votes. Uh, it was a close one. Uh, there was three things on there. There was either I do gaming reviews, uh, Chief watches anime that he's never seen before, or we both do like movie reviews. Uh, and for a while there was neck and neck, and we're, we were talking about it on our on our on our chat. We're like, what do we do if this is like like tied? And Chief's like, well, we're gonna do all of it anyway, so fuck it, you know. <laughs> well, I think I I kind of changed my mind on this a little bit because before I was insistent that they be good <laughs> because <laughs> I get I you know like there's I'm very particular about anime. I do right. like. Some, but I'm very particular about it. Uh, Robotech, the, one of your favorites. Yeah, the, the subject matter Has uh, to, be to me matters a lot. So, uh, But then I started thinking, it's going to be way funnier if it's just some bizarro shit I've never seen before. So, yeah, hit me hit me with whatever. Well, I'm, right <laughs> now, right now let's, let me, as I, uh, now this, this poll will be ended by the time this show goes live, but let me uh, go right now and see what's winning on the poll. Uh, so there were four, there were four uh, choices for this poll. Uh, there is Rosario Vampire, The Devil is a Part Timer, Onagai Teacher, and Dot Hack Roots. And as of right now, uh, there is a tie <laughs> uh, of Devil is a Part Timer and Onagai Teacher are the two that are tied right now. Now we still have one day, 14 hours left uh, in this. Yeah, poll. if it comes down to a tie at the end, I say we let just just let Mod do the tiebreaker. We'll just ask Mod. Which one? Well, Maude Maud already replied. She said all of them. Oh, no, she said all of them well, on the other one. No, yeah, well, we can let Maude decide. Um, now, I will say Onigai Teacher is one of my all-time favorite animes ever. Uh, so that will be very interesting for Chief to watch one of my favorite animes of all time and see what he thinks. Uh, but all as, long of these, as, it is, as long as it doesn't bore me, as long as it's not boring, then I, I'll probably it, it shouldn't. have... Uh, it shouldn't. Like, uh, all right, sorry. There, you know... Uh, the premises of all of these are, are really, really good. Like, Onagai Teacher has a special place in my heart, uh, but all of them... And, and I did throw a dot .hack on there, Chief. I threw a dot .hack on there specifically because you were like, there's so much stuff. Hey, my my fate there. is in the hands of the listeners hands and you, listeners. so... Um, but, you know, with that, and with movie reviews getting second place, we are going to do some movie reviews because there's so many movies out there. And everybody, like everybody today, is talking about the Justice League. We have not, I haven't seen Justice League yet, Chief. I don't think I haven't seen Justice League yet. Uh, but we're going to yeah. be doing so much on YouTube in 2018. I mean, with this con videos, because Chief and I, I'm are... Terif I'm terrified of bed bugs, so I don't go to theaters. And that's another a new fear of theaters I've developed. Normally, I just don't like them because I don't like crowds, and I, I don't, I don't like movie theater crowds because people talk in the movie and it bothers me. Right. And I, I like to really absorb the movie. Uh, and I don't like people walking back and forth, going to the bathroom, whatever. It gets on my nerves. Better but watch uh, it at now, home with your surround sound. Uh, one of the theaters on the other side of town, uh, they found bed bugs in. So now I'm never Ooh. going to a movie theater. <laughs> See, again. I don't like artificial butter, so that's why I don't I, either. I don't, I don't like, like the smell of it. It's no, horrible. It's horrible. Um, but she, w once that poll is done, Chief will be watching one of those. Uh, I, I'm going to be helping him edit with those. Uh, that way you have so uh, there would be some cool stuff in those videos, maybe like some stills from the episodes that he talks about. I'll throw those in it there. Pro probably won't be like my normal, <laughs> my normal oh, no. uh, in the car, uh, gorilla shot videos. That I do I'm hoping for most. I'm hoping after you watch the most of them are him just sitting on the couch with like this blank stare of what the fuck did I just watch? <laughs> you know. And I told people, somebody asked he's like somebody on Twitter uh, was uh, and I want to get his name right. I want to give him a shout out. I want to give him a shout out. Um. So, um, so, uh, Super Macho Jedi, uh, who changed his name to, I like Justice League, screw you, very awesome, uh, <laughs> he, he had put that he, uh, he didn't know any of those, uh, animes firsthand. Um, oh, that's, that's my buddy, uh, that's, that's our buddy Hunter. Oh, that's Hunter? That's Hunter, yeah. Did he change his name? He's not the, uh, yeah. he's not the, uh, the, 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 the mean geek? Yeah. No, no, no. He's been super macho for a while now. Okay. Yeah, I love Hunter. Um, so, um, wait a minute. What's this? Trooper Johnson. What's it? I used to have a used to have a podcast, and I shoot pics of action figures and convention shit. Trooper Johnson. Um, yeah. Uh, I didn't want to pick things like Attack on Titan, uh, or Robotech, uh, you know, or or like a Gundam, something like like you have seen. I wanted to start off with something you haven't seen before. 
Well, know? yeah, now I, I kind of think the weirder the better, because it's, it's, uh, if I like it, it's not gonna, <laughs> if I, if, I mean, if it's just something that, like, it's something I'm really into, I'm not gonna be as, it's not gonna be as funny to I, watch I a think, reaction to that. <laughs> I picked a few, I picked a few with a lot of fan service. A lot of fan service for you. So I'm just going to get pummeled if I didn't like it. <laughs> no, no, when I say fan service, Chief, I mean a lot of ambiguous panty shots. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> That's interesting. So, so we'll, we'll, I thought you meant like I had like a big fan base. I, I'm an idiot. Um, right. Rosario Vampire has a pretty good va- fan base. But these are all real good animes. Whatever, you, you know, this is all about... Ba- all right, I'll, I'll put it out there now. Don't give me shit over it, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna say what I think. I've never seen this shit before. If that's I don't like want. it, I'm gonna say so. That's what I want. You know, that's what I want. But let's talk about something we both thought was really, really great. Time to hit that spoiler alert because it's time for some DC Comics. Hit it. Spoiler alert! Spoiler alert! The Renegades are about to spoil this week's DC Comics. So this week, ladies and gentlemen, and the embargo is over. The embargo actually for for spoiler free reviews was on uh, Sunday night. But now we can talk about some spoiler reviews because it is Wednesday. Uh, we got a Doomsday Clock. Doomsday Clock, Chief, issue number one is out. It is yeah. out, and oh my fucking god! Yeah, <laughs> I, you know what? I've, I've there's already. I don't know how they get around this. I guess it's just probably being very vague about it. But I've seen a couple of articles about people, other uh, uh, news, new comic news sites, and and podcasts that, that got the advanced copy and read it, and that. And from from what I read, uh, most people are in agreement with us. From what I'm seeing, Good. that it's just mind blowing. <laughs> it, it's mind blowing. This and it, I mean, it really does feel like a follow up to Watchmen, to the Watchmen series. Yeah, man, it's like it's Watchmen to the hilt for the like the almost the entire book until you get to that one point where they said we have to go find John and find where he retreated to, and then. Next person you see is Superman. Yeah. <laughs> Which, and I read something... asked another question is is Superman Doctor Manhattan? What... Well, what I read was what I read was really cool. I saw somebody write about it, um, and, and his opinion kind of is the same as mine. You have Superman, who is an alien, but embodies yeah. everything good about the planet Earth. You know, he embodies everything that's right and just about the planet Earth. Then you have Doctor Manhattan, who is a human who gains superpowers. And, and disavowed anything he wanted to do with the human race because he felt they were flawed, they were inferior. So it's like these two sides to a coin. It's like the yin and yang of the coins. Um, and this book really does seem like it, t- it starts right after Watchmen ends. Like right after Watchmen ends. Well, you know, it's, it's kind of weird too. Uh, another book that ties into it uh, sort of is, uh, I, don't know, I think it's going to, well, you got, the Mr. Oz thing, and I wonder if that has any connection to because I, I'm I'm trying to wrap my head around if all this shit's all going to connect somehow. You got metal going on right now, and now Doomsday Clock is kicked back in. And Tom King and, said and, everything is connected. And under the Rebirth umbrella, all that shit's supposed to connect somehow. And they just made mention in action, I think it was uh, I think it was action uh, that uh, Superman's discovered finally that someone's messing with. The timeline that mm-hmm. someone has messed with the time, so it's it's kind of starting to tie in to uh, to Doomsday Clock, right? And and also Detective was tied into the Mister Oz story too. So it's kind of these these little tendrils of everything are starting to come. And who's Mister Oz? We still don't know. We don't know if it's Jor El or maybe it's Ozymandias. Ozymandias. Who knows? Yeah, I don't know. So Could Super be... Superman finally finds out what Bruce and Barry and Wally West have known like since Rebirth started. Yeah. That's that's kind of a spoiler, so now I don't got to review action. <laughs> okay, good. But uh, the uh, but yeah, he finds out he f- kind of figures out that because uh, because he goes to um, Mogo to get a Green Lantern file to see, he he wants to see he doesn't want to see a recreation of the explosion of Krypton. He wants the actual because Mogo the, on the Green Lantern Corps has the actual video of Krypton exploding. Hmm. And they have an actual recording of the actual event, and he wants to go there and see it because he wants to see if there's any way Jor-El could have escaped Krypton to right. see if this if this Mister Oz is really Jor-El. And uh, it gets to the point on uh, the video where he sees his rocket shoot off of Krypton as the planet's exploding, and then the file gets corrupted and shuts off. 
and the Green Lantern Corps are baffled as to who could have tampered with their recording of Krypton exploding and who would want to. And then Superman kind of dawns on him and he goes, it's not, he goes, it's, someone's messed with our timeline. Someone has messed with time. And it, it dawns on him uh, on in that issue. So I'm thinking that all this shit is going to uh, connect up with this event with the Watchmen going on with Doomsday Clock. And man, it's just my, it's so, fucking crazy. So they showed Superman's rocket blasting off from Krypton. They didn't show Supergirl's rocket blasting off from Krypton. No, it, well, it, it it only uh showed it only got to the point where Superman had just barely left the atmosphere, and then the the video files corrupted, mm. so they couldn't watch the rest of it. So you couldn't see if Jor El made it or Supergirl or anybody. Right. So this taking place right after Watchmen ends, and that's where we pretty much are talking about it because they talk about you know Ozymandias <laughs> and everything that he did. They talk that Night Owl, Silk Spectre are missing, Rorschach is missing. Yeah, it's directly like, yeah, really like right after everything that's happened, kind of during the cleanup of like three million people died or something. Yeah, they mentioned that the the journal that Rorschach had sent to the to the media was found and it was being looked at. Um, but then that magically Rorschach's alive. Yeah. And the Night Owl and Silk Spectre are missing. Nobody knows yeah. where they are. But Rorschach's alive, or we think we don't know if this is actually Rorschach because I mean he was vaporized at the end of Watchmen by Doctor Manhattan. Doctor Manhattan vaporized well, him to nothing. And this this Rorschach kind of speaks kind of broken, like the garbage like, people in Walking Dead. A little bit, a little bit, but he it, it in that even like the the text where he's talking is written like shaky, even like or like yeah. the text box around what he's talking about is kind of shaky, and he speaks in these like kind of really simple English. Phrases we go, to, we to go his, now. You come yeah. with me. You know those kind of Tarzan, kind of like Tarzan. Razor, like a <laughs> razor. No, but uh, yeah, and and uh, he even the the people he breaks out of prison say he's not. You're not. They like you're not Rorschach, and he's like I am Rorschach. He keeps telling him he is, and they insist that he's not. And he, then but, he, uh, but then he takes off his glove, and his hand is is black. Yeah, so uh, I thought maybe it, maybe it's like a like a reconstituted zombie Rorschach. <laughs> yeah, I I don't know, but uh, uh, we saw that Ozymandias has his 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 uh, little cat thing, that Bubastis cat creature that he he's he's made, apparently made another one in the time. <laughs> yeah, so it could be a clone. <laughs> but he's been on the run. It, it so could, it could be maybe a clone Rorschach. Who knows? It could be. But he's he's getting the mime and uh, his wife out of prison for Ozymandias. And the mime. Yes, kinda... he has their son like somewhere, and yeah. he forces them to do this, whatever they're doing. The the mime would not leave the prison without his weapons, Chief. No, <laughs> it's fake guns. <laughs> Don't point imaginary Don't, guns at me. Yeah, that was good. Um, you know. And Ozymandias lures them to, to Night Owl's lair, hoping that Night Owl would, would show up, but of course he doesn't. Yeah, and uh, they have, nobody really knows where they are. But uh, then they he, they say they're going to find out where John retreated to, and they don't say how or and <laughs> how they even uh, can imagine doing that or what, what they could possibly do to do that. But the very next thing after he says that is Superman and Lois in bed sleeping. And Superman wakes up having a nightmare, and he's even floating above the bed, uh, which led me to believe that they were saying that Doctor Manhattan retreated to the this universe because it's still a mystery as to where this Superman comes from and why he's been hiding out. Right, because the, the New Fifty Two Superman uh, is dead. Yeah, he died, and then uh, this guy came out of nowhere, and he'd been living in a remote place with Lois, and he's got a son named Jonathan, but it's uh, it's Superman. And uh, from what I understood in the early parts of when the, when the new Superman, after the New 52 died and the new Superman came out, the way I understood it was that this was the old school Superman that we all remember, you know, that we all grew up with. This was right. him who's been hiding out. And through events of the Flashpoint or whatever, the New 52 had changed everything, and been, the, the, the timeline had been altered. And I think uh, 
people mostly thought that was Barry Allen's fault. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, it turns out it's someone else tampered with the timeline. And uh, at some ultra powerful, powerful force, whatever, uh, leading us to believe that when we found out it was going to be connected, to, or we knew it was going to be connected to Watchmen, that maybe Doctor Manhattan is behind all of this. But this made me think that maybe Doctor Manhattan retreated to this universe, uh, made himself forget somehow that he's Doctor Manhattan, and took on this form of the Superman in this in this world. Mm-hmm. And uh, and maybe Clark is Doctor Manhattan. <laughs> That's kind of what this, I was thinking. This issue really does give more questions than any answers to anything because we knew that this was coming because, you know, at, during the uh, the rebirth one shot before all the titles came out, Bruce finds the comedian's bloody button in the Batcave. It's embedded in the Batcave wall. Yeah. Then we had the two part button storyline, or the four part with in Batman and Flash where they go through the timeline on the yeah. cosmic treadmill and uh they watched the reverse flash is like vaporized by a blue light that looks like dr manhattan yeah so that that was all the weird shit that happened months ago and in november now they're dropping doomsday clock on us after all that so i might have to go back and read the button again just to yeah definitely see if there's anything i missed because yeah. this was so weird and raised so many questions and uh, speaking of questions, uh, Rorschach being based on the question, I thought it would have been cool at some point if he ripped the mask off and there was just no face. <laughs> right. Ozzy Diaz had brought the question there somehow. And then if this is all connected, if everything is connected, and if, if Dr. Manhattan fucked with timelines or, or almost pulling a Reed Richards where he's like recreating worlds, did Dr. Manhattan create all those dark multiverses that Barbados got the Dark Knights from. I mean, if it everything's connected, there's so many questions on this. You know, crazy as a Doctor Van Hatton Bar- uh, Barbados or whatever it was, fucking full on yeah. battle. And we don't even know where this falls. And we don't even know where this would fall into a timeline because you have metal still going on. And they say Doomsday Clock is going to be a year long event. It's a 12 issue event, and it's going to be like year long. Well, some uh, some of this timeline shit's wonky anyway because uh, during the um, during Metal just recently, uh, the Flash had his regular Speed Force powers right. in Red Death and in in the recent tie-ins and stuff. Flash has has his regular Speed Force, but at the same time in the regular Flash comic book, he's got the negative he was, Speed Force. Yeah, he was the negative Flash for a while, so. Uh, the timeline's a little off somehow, but I mean, you gotta, when you're reading the different, you gotta kind of give, it's a huge universe, you gotta give it some leeway. Now, I do have <laughs> to give, you now, can always just, hey, Dr. Fate yeah. fucking put everybody back in time, so. Yeah. And I mean, <laughs> I I give a lot of shit to Marvel, but you do have to admit a lot of times their universes, their books, they will sync so much stuff up with an event to where every book is kind of taking part in this event where there's there isn't like another storyline going on for the most part. Some books still do. But a lot of the, the key books, they, they wrap up a storyline so the next issue ties into the big event. You know, So I do have to give them credit for that. But DC, I mean, this is huge. I mean, two gigantic events, both helmed by, both helmed by two of the biggest and best writers currently going. You got Snyder over there on Metal, but then you got Jeff Johns on freaking uh, Doomsday Clock. And even Johns has said this is probably the toughest arc event he's ever done because he's he's got to tie the watchman into dc and all this other stuff yeah. that's a lot of weight on your shoulders tampering with anything alan moore's ever done i mean to to mess with alan moore's masterpiece i mean they teach watchman uh, classes at some colleges places yeah. like they, they teach the book and uh it, to mess with it and before watchman i thought was just it was okay i thought it was there were some issues that were all right i read that that whole series but uh uh, it, it that was clearly something that maybe they shouldn't have done. And that's the one that <laughs> the was, that's the one that focused a lot more on like the other Minutemen, right? Yeah, and it was like kind of pre pre Watchmen stuff, like yeah. early the early Watchmen, and uh, which I think it was. It, there were issues that were good, and there were issues that were really maybe they shouldn't have done. <laughs> now I'm and, I'm, uh, I'm really interested in what Panda thinks, you know, because she named a, one of her bunnies after Rorschach. Well, I think this is the right way to do it. I think this is the right way to tie it in. I mean, they might, I mean they're going to do it. I mean, getting Jeff Johns to do it's, 
pretty good guy to do it. <laughs> I mean, you got to think like all that Lantern Core stuff and and that the ending of Green Lantern and everything that he's that Jeff Johns Jeff Johns has kept DC cool, I think. Yeah. <laughs> In you know, a lot of respect. Re- recently, Snyder too. Yeah, recently I've seen a lot of people say they hated the Johns run on Lantern, and I don't know why. They were like, oh, it's the same old thing that always happens, blah, blah, blah. I thought yeah. Jeff Johns' run was excellent. I thought his run on, on Aquaman brought Aquaman back into prominence and made Aquaman great again. MAGA! MAGA! Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Make Aquaman Make great Aquaman again. Make Aquaman great again. MAGA! Uh, you know, uh, but... Now I am a little bummed because some media outlets that cover this stuff like we do, they got like a box from DC Comics which had like pancake batter in it from like Joe's like pancake house, Joe's diner. I would have liked to have gotten that DC, but uh, thank you for the books anyway. And it was it was it was so awesome. Hey, hey let's not screw this up. Oh we no get... no no, we're not screwing it up. We're not screwing it up. We don't look a gift horse in the mouth. We do not look a gift horse uh-huh. in the mouth. Oh, I appreciate it. Um, this was a packed week, and I packed week with everything. You know, Doomsday Clock was the big thing, and then Chiefs uh, talk about action a bit. But it's a it's a stacked week. I mean, it's just a huge week for DC Comics. Uh, yeah, there was a lot that. to get through. I've read uh, a handful of the books, but there's still so many to get through. It's hard, it's hard to get through all the. I mean, literally, it's like three folders full of books. Yeah. And, you know, that we try to read every week, and I'm, you know, me trying to play catch up on books. Like I said, I've been busy like fucking hell with everything that we're doing, but it's all worth it. And I wouldn't trade it for anything. Everything that we got going on, everything we got in the pipe. To to Chief and I last the other week, sitting by our computers for like two hours waiting for C2E2's press release, but our press registration button to go live. Yeah. And uh, we're getting uh, hopefully getting press passes. I would I would hope. Hopefully, we should know something by January. If not, we're still going to yeah, be that's, there. Yeah, uh, that's a long wait. Yeah, we'll, so we'll still be there. But, I mean, uh, we'll get a lot more cool access to things if yeah. we get the press badges, too. Yeah, but we'll still be there. We'll still be covering everything. Uh, com videos, all that on the YouTube. Please, everybody, please go like and subscribe uh, to, the, to, the, to the YouTube page. Uh, we're putting so much stuff on there every week. We're, try, we're trying to put stuff there every week. Um, Some good stuff on there, I think. I've listened to those commentary tracks, and I think they're funny. And then, and and no, I don't listen to my. I listen to what spins. I laugh at spin stuff because I when we're doing it, I don't always catch everything. And then I go back and I listen to him, and then spin <laughs> spin makes me laugh. So I just I normally just listen to him while I'm do, watching them. Just but wait they're, for, they're funny, I think. Yeah, just wait for this week because I mean I lose my mind on Time Machine. I I I'm yelling, I'm screaming because I'm just getting so pissed off. At this movie, it's going to be hilarious. You get to hear me pissed off. And we're looking at something also. I put a teaser out on t- Twitter today. I'm not going to give much more away here on the show. But uh, December, Chief and I have something that I've talked to him about that we're going to be looking into maybe for you all, the fans, to say thank you and to give back to you. It's what I talked about yes. with the with the thing, you know, the click, 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 click thingy. I don't remember. <laughs> I'll, okay, I'll it you, like, remind I'll, me. That I, man, I'm telling you, I I am not with it today. I was at all. Ta- it was when I asked a question about the what we used to do commentary on, if we were able to do something with that. That what the the program that we used for commentary, uh, were we able to? Oh, do oh, yeah. oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, okay, I got you. you know, something we've talked about for <laughs> something we've talked about for a long time. Um, it took the long road to get to that one. It's a long, hard road out of hell. But uh, we're looking at something that way we maybe we can give back to you all, the fans, because you all have been fantastic to us over the years, and it would be just a way to say thank you and uh, to give you a little bit of spotlight. It'll be fun if we can do it. It's going to be a lot of fun if we can do it. I was looking at today. I think there's a way we can do it. So we're going to be testing that out to make sure that we can do it. We're going to be doing that. Of course, we want to wish everybody who's listening to this, Happy Thanksgiving. Yeah. Happy Thanksgiving to all of you. We hope that you're with your friends or your family. You're eating a lot of food, whether you're eating turkey, whether you're eating tofurkey. We don't care. Just eat that food. Go into that food coma. Eating top ramen. Top ramen. Oh, I bit my cheek. Mm. <laughs> I usually put some ketchup in there. A whole bottle of ketchup. Lip witch. Girl it. Kathy. And your girl Kathy. And I went to Kroger, and you know what they're selling at Kroger, Chief? They got big stands. No, the copper pan and the square copper pan. pan. <laughs> awesome. Hey, those look like I'd, I'd use those pans if oh, I have. It's infused with copper and vibranium rings. <laughs> that that flip switch thing looks pretty good. Oh yeah, 
It's a good thing. Shout out to Djibouti and their uh, dubs of uh, Kathy uh, Mitchell stuff. Yeah, as always, go to Djibouti Dubs and Djibouti Studios on YouTube, and uh, you will enjoy it, I promise. You will check those out. After you go and subscribe to our YouTube channel, like we said, 2018 is going to be a big year. We're going to have some movie reviews. Chief's going to be watching some anime. I'm still, even though I got zero votes, I'm going to do some video game stuff. He's doing it anyway. I'm doing it anyways. Um, (laughs) You know, because, I mean, I beat Ninja Gaiden last week. I beat Ninja yeah, Gaiden. and then Punch-Out before that. Punch-Out before that. Before that was Legend of Zelda and Little Nemo. I'm on a fucking roll. So we're going to be doing a lot more of that. As always, please like, subscribe, follow us on every one of our social medias, on Twitter at Spacey75 and at the Nerd Rage Renegades. We are so close to hitting, I want to say, let me see here. We are so close to hitting 2,600 followers on Twitter. We are at 2,595. We're five away, minus eight, plus 10, minus friends. 12. Tell your friends. Tell your mom. Get your grandmother to go like us on there where you get to see all of our weird stuff. You got a glimpse of what we talked about if you follow us on Facebook at facebook.com backslash Radio. You got a glimpse of what Chief and I talk about on our private yeah. chats the other day. You should have seen what was before that because we were talking about Barry Gibbs' dick having a having a feathered hair and a beard. Yeah. <laughs> Barry and Gibb, then it has its own hair dryer. Barry Gibb has the dick of God, you know? So <laughs> that's what God looks like. So uh, I'm going to be doing more of that over on Facebook. You'll get to see little intimate stuff with Chief and I and what we talk about on a daily basis. It's off the wall. It's insane. It makes no sense. But we love it. It's fun. So remember, a lot of con- dry comic talk in there. We've got to get through that, though. Oh, yeah, you got to get through <laughs> that. Gonna... I'll only post the juicy stuff. I'll only post the, the you know, the dirt. Yeah, but... The dirt. Barry Gibb dick talk. Yeah, Barry Gibb. Hey, Barry Gibb. Have you? Hey, you have to accept Barry Gibb into your life, okay? That's <laughs> Barry Gibb. Barry Gibb is your Lord and Savior. Yeah, he's, he, he'll make you. He'll keep you staying alive, okay? But that's facebookcom backslash radio. We're on Instagram. We'll be posting more on Instagram once con season comes up. We're on there. Just search up Nerd Rage Renegades on the Instagram. We're there. I'm hoping to hit Milwaukee this year too. Whenever that comes around, so maybe you, if I see you there, maybe you'll see me there. Maybe you'll see you there. Uh, we don't have the Snapchatty or the Tumblr things. Not in, you know, not there. Don't know. You have an Instagram. Yeah, we have Instagram. Nerd Rage Renegades. Go check that one out. Um, I don't know about the Snapchat because I think isn't that just where I like post boob pictures of myself like on a bed? Yeah, a movie, I just I just post nonstop dick pics. <laughs> Very good <laughs> dick pics. Hey oh. And Chris, will t- <laughs> and Chris will tell you all the all the feeds you can catch the show on. The Nerd Rage Renegades are on the air every Wednesday on Podbean, Stitcher, Player FM, iTunes, Google Play, and every Thursday on GamingRebellion.com, filling the Void Podcast Network, and now iHeartRadio. So like, subscribe, remember YouTube as all of our commentary tracks is going to have all those good shows. And of course, we've got guests coming up here in the next couple of weeks. Uh, we have another adult performer coming on with us in December. So that'll be Yay. great. Uh, that'll be fantastic. Always fun. Always fun. They're great people. And of course, coming up in December, of course, is the annual holiday wish book extravaganza. Oh, yeah. I forgot. We've Where got we a... Leave? I think we're still like back in 1934. We, or we jumped. We did like the 1920s, like Spiegel catalogs, and then we jumped to like the 1970s. So we still got oh, to yeah. get through all like the 40s and 50s, and oh. maybe a little bit of the 90s. Yeah, yeah. I think, and we should also we should we should cover the 80s a little a little better. Oh, we yeah. We'll go back to the 80s a little bit better for some of that good the, stuff. That's when the shit was rolling high. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but every Star year, Wars, GI Joe, Transformer, all that shit. Oh was coming hell yeah, and humanoids, all that good stuff. Oh, and humanoids. We gotta talk about humanoids. Oh, definitely. Dungeons and Dragons, the cartoon with the toys. Oh yeah, it's gonna be good. So the ho- acrobats. The holiday wish book special is coming out. We're gonna be talking about that special that we're gonna be doing, and then of course, of course, Chief and I are gonna plan something for New Year's. It'll probably be us watching a movie on New Year's. Uh, oh yeah, I think that would be fun. I wish that's the one thing that uh, we're gonna try for. I want to try for. I, I want to do. Maybe do a live movie viewing somehow. I don't know how we would do that. But we're going to plan it out. So thank you all for joining us again this week as we talked about The Punisher, Charles Manson's death, and everything else. We'll be back again next week because we're here every week. We're not going anywhere. We don't take a break. No, breaks are for pussies. Well, we did, but we don't hardly ever. 
<laughs> not, not really. We are workhorses. So, until next time, Chief, I now pronounce you husband, I now pronounce you wife and big-ass head, Andrews. <laughs> You're weak. You're weak, Andrews, with your big-ass head. Nerd Rage Relegates